Welcome everyone to the AAF Simulated on EA Sports and today we've got a big matchup between two teams that are looking to get their season back on track. The 1 and 2 San Antonio Commanders hit the road to take on the 1 and 2 Birmingham Iron in a, a match that really might just tell the tale of one of these teams seasons. We got both these teams that have really struggled when it comes to their offensive performances and we're going to see a couple new faces today on both teams but especially the big one we want to talk about is San Antonio. Logan Woodside really struggled. He was their starting quarterback for the first three weeks. He did not do very well. He threw six interceptions on this, on the, in the first three weeks. Five of them came last week against uh, San Diego. So we got Marquise Williams coming out today as a starting QB. But this game, I think one of the big factors that it's going to come down to is which defense performs better. Both of, these, both of these defenses have really struggled when it comes down to stopping their opponents when they have to. So we'll see what happens today. We got Tim Lewis, the head coach of the Birmingham Iron. His team opened up the season really nicely with a big win um, against Memphis, 26-19. But since then, they dropped two in a row. Meanwhile, we got San Antonio, who has lost two games already to San Diego. So they were swept by the fleet. But otherwise... They did beat Orlando. That was an upset. See what they can do to get today against Birmingham. James Larson in the booth, and I got my brother with me, Jake Larson, for a color commentator today. Jake, how you feeling today about this game? Pretty excited. Two teams that want to make us uh, last effort to make the playoffs here. One and two, they've got to, uh, you know, got to win this one in week four. Novak sends it away. Back to receives to Marcus Ayers, and he will just take a knee in the end zone. So San Antonio going to get it first. And we're going to get a look at Marquise Williams. He's getting his first start of the season. This guy, look, he's a big quarterback. He's 6'4", 235 pounds. He's someone that can run. He can throw. And I really like the idea of from Mike Riley to, you know, get Logan Woodside out of there. And actually, guys, this decision was made by you. Um, if you don't follow us on Twitter, you should really go do that because we posted the poll. Should Marquise Williams start in week four after Logan Woodside's bad start? And you said yes. Also, on the other side, we said the same thing about Luis Perez who struggled, but you guys said to keep him in. So, again, this is a fan-based league. You guys made the decision. Let's see what Marquise Williams does. Hopefully, you fans made the right decision for San Antonio. First and 10 from their own 25. Williams back to throw on first down. Quick pass. It's caught. DeMarcus Ayers up to 39. An injury timeout already. That's Ryan White, the Birmingham Iron cornerback. That's down. That's not good for the Irons defense. He's been someone that's made some plays. Jake, what do you think is going to be one of the big keys of this game for Marquise Williams in his first start? Um, I think it's going to be consistency, finding those open receivers. He's got several weapons in McKay and Ward, Rodriguez. Um, and I think also balancing it with the ground game. Yeah, absolutely. We got Kenneth Farrow, who um, he hasn't got a lot of production this season, but he's got four touchdowns, which leads running backs across the league. So we'll see what happens. Tough injury there for Ryan White. I hope that he's okay. We saw him on the bench a little, a couple seconds ago. But big play there on first down, 14-yard pickup. Let's see what they can do from the 39-yard line. They go on the ground. It's Kenneth Farrow trying to find a hole and takes it up to the 43. And now we're going to get a look at the San Antonio offense. And they have a lot of weapons. It's a real shame they're 1-2. One, one of the reasons why this offensive line needs to improve. This is a big test for them against good Birmingham defense. Again, we talked about Kenneth Farrow. He's been a big part of this offense. But Mikhail McKay is someone that has not gotten a lot of attention. And he really should be getting more. I mean, he's been playing phenomenal football with um, 15 catches, 212 yards, and a touchdown. You've got DeMarcus Ayers, 12 catches, 187 yards. You've got a lot of guys that can make plays there on the offensive side of the football. Second and seven now from their own 43. Low snap. They get it to Kenneth Farrow. He's got a big hole. Kenneth Farrow into Birmingham territory to the 49. That's a first down run for their go-to guy in the backfield. Exactly what you were talking about, Jake. Get that running game going. That's what they have to do. That's what they've struggled with the last couple weeks. The running game has not been able to get going until later on in the game. And at that point, it's just a little bit too late. I go as far as saying Farrow's going to make or break this offense in the first half because they have a new quarterback, a lot of unpredictable variables, and Farrow's the one who needs to come forward and do better than the 3.7 yards per carry he's been doing this season. Yeah, I agree. Off play action, Marquise Williams, heavy blitz, gets it off, and what a throw across the middle. Wide open, that's Mikhail McKay. Actually, excuse me, Greg Ward Jr. to the 32. San Antonio looking pretty dang good in this opening drive, and look at this. See, this is something that we really didn't see from Woodside. Marquise Williams has a guy blitzing him right in his face, and he puts an absolute bullet on the money to Greg Ward. Doesn't get much better than that, and they're already 
practically in field goal range as long as Williams doesn't take a sack or turn over the football. Already seeing some confidence from Williams, and I'm sure Mike Riley, head coach of these commanders, he loves to see that in his quarterback. First and 10 from the 32. Back to throw again is Williams. Quick pass, it's caught, but actually it's knocked away at the last second. Ward couldn't hang on after the big hit. Let's take a look at this Birmingham defense. You've got some names, guys. Casey Sales, he's had a couple sacks this season. He's been outstanding on the line. You've got Jonathan Massacoy, who had a couple huge fumble. Joe Powell has been phenomenal at the linebacker position. Jamar Summers, Jack Tocho, Bradley Silva, Elijah Campbell. These, this defense is built to last. The problem is, the last couple weeks, they have really struggled in closing out games. We saw in week two, Against Salt Lake, they lost the game 28-14. Their defense just really couldn't get things going in that second half. Salt Lake scored a lot of points. And then last week, they were beating the Atlanta Legends 20-8 and then blew that game and lost 25-20. The defense has got to hold on better than that. Kenneth Farrell on the ground to the outside, and there's a defensive play. Farrell gets blown up at the 30. It's only a gain of about two. Brings up third and eight. This is a big third down, Jake. What do you think San Antonio is going to try to do here? You know, third and eight. I know he was playing it on Faro, but I think now is a time where Marquise Williams is going to have to leave the comfort zone and go for one of his targets. Probably McKay, maybe Faro out of the backfield. Who knows? Well, Faro's not even in the backfield. All receivers spread wide. Let's see what the play call is from Riley. Williams fires to the outside, and it's complete. That's Faro. There's your guy, Jake. And Faro, he's not only he's not only had an impact on the ground, but he has had an impact through the air as well on the season. Kenneth Farrow with 51, 51 yards receiving so far through three weeks. Expect to see more of him today. Especially for Marquise Williams getting some of those check down screens. But how about that? Beautiful out route there for the first down. At the 20, knocking on the door of the red zone here. Solid opening drive so far for these commanders that have struggled offensively quite a bit. On the ground, Farrow trying to cut it up field. Great tackle made inside. That's Jamar Summers. He was not fooled by the fake end around. You know, going back to the third and eight, I really do like the poison Marquise Williams is showing. To be honest, uh, you know, Woodside did set a very low bar last week, but Marquise Williams is doing fine so far. Absolutely, and I agree. He's been confident with his throws, and and Mike Riley is designing some great plays for his QB to shine in. Back to throw, and Williams is going to take off with it, and he lost the football, and is recovered by Benekez Brown. Wow. And that ends what was a phenomenal opening drive. And this is what San Antonio continues to struggle with week after week after week. It's turnovers. And they kill them. Last week they had six turnovers against San Diego. And here they open up the game. Marquise Williams tries to take it himself. And he just loses the football. Ball security is not there. Brown able to scoop it up. And now we're going to get a look at Birmingham's offense. Luis Perez coming out. And he's had an up and down season. But mainly... It really has been more so down. Um, he's completing 67% of his passes. He's thrown for 829 yards and five touchdowns, but he's thrown seven interceptions. And last week, they they blew that lead to Atlanta. But in the final minutes, they were marching down the field. They had a chance to score down by five. And Perez decides to just chuck it into the end zone for no reason and it's picked off. And they lost that game. He's got to make better and smarter decisions today. First and 10 now from their own 16. Huge turnover that ended a good drive. Trent Richardson trying to bounce outside. Look at the way Trent Richardson just barrels through those defenders. I thought it was maybe going to get a yard. He turns it into four. Richardson's going to be a big part. Both these running backs are going to be a big part of these offenses today. Through the air and on the ground. Second and six coming up from the 20. Tim Lewis. His defense got a big turnover there. Let's see if the offense can capitalize on that and march down the field. And Trent Richardson is blown up. That's Shane Washington on the tackle. Brings up third and five. And we haven't really seen much of Birmingham's offense yet. But Jake, what do you want to see Tim Lewis call here on third and five? Um, I think they're going to need to go through the air. I do understand the Richardson attack scheme that they've had. Uh, he's getting 4.6 yards per carry in the season, but they need to throw on third down. Third downs is where they have struggled with, especially last week. Press is going to go deep down the field. He's got a man wide open, and he can't hang on. But Damian Washington, he had a step on him. San Antonio closes quickly, and Washington cannot hang on through the contact. That's going to bring up fourth and five. And I think... 
Gonna send out the punt team, and that's tough. See, the one thing is here, Washington, yes, he should probably make this catch. But Perez, instead of leading him away from the defender, leads him into the defender with that throw. If he puts that throw a little bit more to the outside, it's a completion, and it's a huge first down. Fourth and five, Colton Schmidt on to punt it away in Birmingham. After the turnover, very disappointing three and out. Back to receive is Greg Ward. Outside is 20, and he makes a spin move. That was beautiful. Up to the 39, so good starting field position for the commanders, and they get the ball right back, and we'll see how this offense responds. They've been through a lot of adversity this season. Marquise Williams getting his first start. He marched the ball down the field really nicely and then tried to run it, and he lost the football. Turnovers. They have, as I said, they've been, what, killed San Antonio the last couple weeks. They got to find out how to erase those. They could easily have the lead right now. Jake, what do you think the key is to this drive? I think really just starting where they left off uh, and just avoiding some of those stupid mistakes. They can't have any penalties, any fumbles, or any picks thrown, or passes thrown into double or triple cover. On the ground as Kenneth Farrell finds a lane. Burst up the middle for 40 uh, to the 44. That's a pick up a five. Good play on first down. And it's what the commanders need. And I think what we really want to see from the commanders is this balanced offensive attack. We haven't seen enough of Kenneth Farrow the last couple of weeks. And I think Mike Riley knows that. I think Riley knows as the head coach, he needs to get his big running back into the game and involved. And he's doing a nice job of it so far. Back to throw on second and five is Williams. Quick check down. It's caught. Mikel McKay up to the 48. And that's going to bring up third and one. Big third down here for the Commanders. One of the play call is going to be from Riley. I know it's third and one. I kind of like to see him go with play action here. I think Birmingham's going to be expecting a run. But we'll see. If Mikael McKay could have just turned up field, he would have had an easy first down. Back to throw. Williams darts it across the middle. It's complete. Man wide open. And it's a first down to Greg Ward Jr. To Birmingham's 39. Excellent execution there by the offense. And again, Marquise Williams standing in the pocket, showing poise, and pushing the ball downfield. It's a great job. And look at that. Right through the heavy traffic. Fires a bullet to Greg Ward. And I think, Jake, as you talked about, yeah, it's really going to be important for Marquise Williams in this first start in the league where you don't, you're still trying to learn who your team actually is. Seeing how confident he's looked so far, despite the fumble, is an impressive thing. First and 10 now. For Birmingham's 39, and they go on the ground. Kenneth Farrell with a big hole. To the 34, that's another gain of about five. I like their tempo. It's been pretty much run pass or run run pass. And they're just barreling forward. They're winning the game at the line right now, and then he's exploiting their secondary as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't put it any better myself. The offensive line, we, we, they've struggled the first three weeks, but so far they've been playing a good game. Back to throw Williams. He's going to go deep and uh, miscommunication there with the receiver. I don't think they were on the same page with the route. That's going to fall incomplete and that's going to bring up third and five. A big third and five from Birmingham's 34. I mean, you're kind of pretty much in field goal range, but we have seen punts from the 35. So here's the 34. Marquise Williams, the one thing he can't do here is either turn over the football or take a sack. Back to throw Williams. Let's it go quick, and he's got a man wide open. It's complete. Evan Rodriguez, the tight end to the 26, and then it's a first down for the Commanders. Big pickup on the play, and San Antonio continues to move the chains. Wide open, another great execution there. Simple tight end out route, and just works to perfection. Blown coverage by Birmingham and Elijah Campbell, the safety. Just can't close that gap fast enough. First and 10 now from the 26. See what the play call is from Mike Riley. Once again, getting close to the red zone here. On the ground is Farrow. Finds a lane and Kenneth Farrow gets to the 20. So once again, they were just outside the red zone by about an inch. Brings up second and four. And yeah. This run pass, run, run pass, run pass, pass kind of offense is working really well. They're balancing it exceptionally well to start this game. And up tempo offense is working well. Second and four now from the 20. 
Once again, it's Farrell. Bounces to the outside, and Kenneth Farrell picks up a block and gets inside the 10. Down to the 9, and that's another big gain on the play. Kenneth Farrow, 40 yards, and we're not even done with the first quarter. And this is exactly what we were talking about here. Even in week three, we're like, Kenneth Farrell's got to get more. He's got to get more carries, and they're giving him the carries today, and it's working. You know, you got your star running back there, four touchdowns on the season in just three weeks, and he's getting the reps that he that he deserves right now. First and goal now, coming up from the nine. We'll see if this blocking keeps up as well. It's been pretty solid for both Marquise Williams, giving him a lot of time, and for Farrell. Yeah, I agree. This offensive line playing much better than they have in the past couple weeks. First and goal from the nine. And that time is David Cobb who goes absolutely nowhere. That was red, completely snuffed out by Devin Taylor. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. What a play. That's a loss of four. David Cobb gets his first carry of the day. And it goes absolutely nowhere. How about that play? We shouldn't have spoken too soon. Right. He just came around practically unblocked. It's a great play. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. 0-0 here in Birmingham. Both of these teams, the Iron and the Commanders, 1-2 on the season. Both of them here in Week 4. Desperately just trying to get a win, get back to the 500 mark, and turn their season around. San Antonio has had a couple rough losses to San Diego. Birmingham's dropped two games in a row to Salt Lake and then Atlanta. And last week, they, they controlled that first half against Atlanta. They scored 20 offensive points. Atlanta scored zero offensive points. Yet they lost that game, 25-20. For second and goal now from the 13, let's see what the play call is from Mike Riley. Off play action, Williams to throw and pressured. He's going to have to try to run with it, and he's going to be taken down for another loss. And guess who? Devin Taylor, who just had the tackle for loss, gets him there. And he's going to bring up third and goal now from the 15. And it, it is a good decision there by Williams not to throw the football, try to force into a spot where he shouldn't. But this offense now, the second time they're in the red zone, and they're not looking too good. What do you think they're going to do here on third and goal from the 15? I mean, I think you have to throw the football, but, you know, if this offensive line doesn't hold up long enough to give Marquise Williams time, it's going to be a really ugly play, I think. See what Mike Riley decides to do here. 15 yards to go to the end zone. Williams to throw. Rifles it across the middle. It's somehow complete. But he's going to be down at the six. He threaded the needle there to Demarcus Ayers. It's a great throw, but it's not enough to get him in the end zone. Look at that. Jamar Summers is all over him. Ayers just able to come down with it. It's a perfect throw from Williams. Regardless, though, it's a big stop from Birmingham's defense, who, for the second time, after letting San Antonio in, in, in inside the red zone, they only have a chance at three. Fourth and goal. 23-yard field goal attempt for Nick Rose been solid on the season so far and this should be a no-brainer kick is up and it is good san antonio with a three nothing lead here with 839 to play first points of the game finally and it's about time but here's the thing that's definitely disappointing for the commanders they had two phenomenal drives and they only have three points to show for it and you know this is something that we saw last week against san diego we saw it week two against orlando we saw it week one against um san, uh, san diego they just can't find a way to get into the end zone. And it's something that they really need to correct. Mike Riley, I know his team has a lead right now. But he's just got to find a way to call plays that gets his team into the end zone and scoring points. And not just three points at a time. So despite the fact that Birmingham has been practically completely dominated today, it's only a 3-0 game. Rose sends it away. Back to receive is Quan Bray. Deep in the end zone, and he'll just take a knee. So now we'll get another look here at Birmingham's offense. They got the, the turnover there, but came out and just came out really flat with a three and out. Perez missed an opportunity deep with Damian Washington. First and ten coming up from their own 25. Let's see what Tim Lewis wants to do to try to get this team in the game. And, you know, with Trent Richardson in the backfield, I think it's a no-brainer just to go to him on first down. 
I agree. I don't think Luis Perez is at the point where he really should be throwing on first down too often. I don't really like the tempo that he's bringing to this offense right now, to be completely honest. We've only seen them for three plays, so let's see what they do here. Just their second drive, and they go to Richardson. It's a pitch to the outside. Trying to find a lane, but San Antonio closes nicely. And he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. San Antonio defense, they've only been out there for four plays, but they've been playing solid each time. And you know, they got some names of their own on the defense, and hopefully we'll get a look at it soon. If we don't, I mean, Devontae Bosby had a nice interception last week. You got Matthew Godden, Joey Embu, Winston Craig on that line, Shane Washington, linebacker position, a lot of studs. Luis Perez going deep, man, wide open across the middle. LaDamian Washington to the 43. That's a big pickup on the play for the iron, and that's the type of stuff that we got to see. And right as I was commending San Antonio's defense, well, Damian Washington is wide open by about 10 yards across the middle. Completely blown coverage, and well, Damian Washington. I mean, he is Birmingham's number one receiver. I don't know how I don't know how you allow him to get that wide open. I mean, he's someone that's been playing phenomenal football, and on the season so far. 15 catches for 181 yards. That one pushes him just to un just under 200 yards. First and 10 now from their own 43. See if Birmingham Cam can put together drives. Trent Richardson takes it to the 45 before being taken down by Shane Washington. Washington again, someone that we've been talking about. He has not gotten enough attention so far through the first three weeks. He is a beast at the linebacker position. He can cover, he can blitz, he can tackle. He can, do it, he can do just about all of it. Second and eight now from the 45. On the ground is Richardson again with a big hole. Richardson spins his way to the 49 of San Antonio. Sets up a big third and one. And I don't know. What do you do here in this, in this situation? I don't know. Richardson looks like he can overpower the most of that defense and pummel forward for a couple yards, but there were a few times where he was given the ball so far back that he wasn't even able to get to the line. Yeah, I guess we'll see what Tim Lewis decided to do here. Third and one. Big play. They keep it on the ground, and Richardson, I think, just has enough for the first down. And he does. Forward progress going to give him it. San Antonio was right there in that gap, but Richardson just able to plunge forward. Just barely got that ball over the line. Line to gain. Look at it here. Yeah. That ball able to cross it. Big time play. And this game is going pretty dang fast here. Almost halfway through the second quarter. First and 10 now from the Commanders 47. On the ground, Ladarius Perkins breaking loose. His first carry of the day, and he takes it to 35. Perkins, someone, doesn't really get a lot of carries. But big play there, and I love it. I really like, you know, that added element of Perkins in there. Picks up 12, and Birmingham putting together a really solid drive. Just his third carry of the entire year. Yeah. And it's that sort of surprise element with Perkins that completely took San Antonio by surprise, and it's a great, great play call there by Tim Lewis. And Tim Lewis, we know he loves Smash Mouth football with Trent Richardson and his defense. And he's doing a great job of coaching this drive. Back to throw is Perez. Gonna try a quick screen and set up nicely. And Jamal Robinson breaking tackles for the first down of the 25. Those screens rarely work in Madden. But that time it works really well. First and 10 at the 25 in the iron. Now putting together drive and you think. I mean, if the iron marched down and score a touchdown here. They've got a nice lead. Even though San Antonio has play, outplayed them for most of this half so far. First and 10 now from the 25. All receivers spread wide. Perez back to throw it all day. He's got to get rid of the football, and he is not. Taken down by Joey Embu all the way back at the 35. And that is some of the stuff that we've seen from Luis Perez. It's just poor decision making. Do not, you're not supposed to hold on to the football that long. The offensive line gives him plenty of time. And I think that one's on Luis Perez. Did you, would you agree with that? I would agree. I mean, that's, a, that's enough of a...
an issue. You go from thinking about a touchdown to now you're hoping you can even make a field goal, get back into the range. I mean, you're pushing it right now on the 35-yard line. And Nick Novak, their kicker, is 2 for 5 on the season. So he's, he's not a very... He's missed two field goals from over 50 yards this year. Back to throw is Perez. Once again, he's just got to get rid of the football. What is he doing? Luis oh Perez goodness. taking down by Joey Embu again, all the way back at the 48. Third and 33. I can't believe it. I've never seen two plays in a row. Quarterback wait that long. Seems like he's really overthinking who he's going to throw the ball to. At that point, you just run the ball, even if it's a loss. Better than getting sacked that far back. Absolutely horrendous decisions twice in a row there from Perez. And he's completely knocked them out of field range. And again, this is what we've been seeing from both of these teams. And this game kind of ugly right now, especially when you look at the scoreboard. And it's because neither of these teams really know how to finish out drives. Offensively, with the exception of that three and out from Birmingham, these teams have put together some nice drives. Yet we only have three points on the scoreboard. Third and 33. Perez will throw. Blitz from San Antonio. Perez is taken oh, down. Oh my. Duke Thomas on the blitz gets back up. And I think that's the first time in a, ever that we've seen three sacks in a row. Fourth and 40. Unbelievable. And I, I think Duke Thomas kind of thought that he threw the football. So he gets back up and he's like, wait, he's, he still has it? And Perez is just sitting there. He's got Jamal Robinson there in the flat. I don't know why he doesn't just throw it to him on that shallow cross route. My goodness. And really, Luis Perez to blame, but also partially Madden Simulation is just being absolutely ridiculously stupid. Fourth and 40 as we're nearing the two-minute warning here. Colton Schmidt punts it away for the second time. It's a wobbler, but it's a good punt. Goes out of bounds at the 16. It gets him inside the 20, and San Antonio has three timeouts and 2.02 to play. David Cobb. Had that one camera that was blown up, but I really wish that we got to see the stat line of Ken Farrow, because he's been playing a great game. He's been getting a lot of reps, and let's see what the commanders can do here. Up 3 to nothing with 2.02 to play. Birmingham gets it for the half. San Antonio here really needs to pad this lead and get another, ideally a touchdown or a field goal at least. Birmingham seems like one of those teams, if you look, they get shut out for one half and they score in the other. So, if the pattern continues, they may come out firing in the second half. High snap, and Kenneth Farrell gets blown up. That was Benico. It's Brown in the backfield. Two minutes. San Antonio with a 3-0 lead, but it has been an ugly game of just bad decisions by both teams offensively and defensively. One of these, play, one of these coaches has got to start putting together some play calls that gets their team into the end zone. Second and 12 now, backed up with their own 14. Marquise Williams to throw. With time going deep and it's knocked away. Looking for Evan Rodriguez. Third and 12 and now you, you're thinking, I mean, if San Antonio can't convert here, Birmingham has a chance to get the ball right back and possibly get back in the field goal range with three, three timeouts. Third and 12. This is going to go on the ground. It's Kenneth Farrow. Who takes it up to the 25, but not going to get enough of the first down, and Birmingham blows the timeout. It is interesting, though, with the amount of offense that we have seen in this game. To only see 3-0 on the scoreboard. Agreed. Joseph Zima on the punted way. His first punt of the day, he'll boot it back to receive his Quan Bray just outside his 20. And he'll be taken down immediately at the 27. So, Birmingham going to come back out onto the field. And Luis Perez, really, I don't know what in the world that was on that last drive there. He was sacked three times in a row. Each and every time, he had plenty of time to throw the football. I mean, that was not on his offensive line. He's just holding on the football way too long. He's got to have a sense of urgency to get that ball out of his hands quickly. 
With only a minute 42 right now and two timeouts, Birmingham needs some quick plays. They need some things to go their way right now to try to get the lead before half, or at least tie things up. I mean, I mean that, that last drive looked great. They got all the way down to the 25, and then boom, 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 it's three sacks. First and 10. Perez back to throw. Will he get sacked again? No, it's a quick pass. It's caught by Quinton Patton, his first catch of the day. Up to the 37, brings up second and one. Time continues to run here. Birmingham let a lot of time run. Gotta get back to the line. Second and one now from their own 37. Perez back to throw. He's gonna go deep down the field, man. Wide open and he missed him. How did he mess that up? That guy was wide open. I don't know who his man was. Or what sort of scheme San Antonio has. I would not be giving each other a bunch of high fives right now. I'd be wiping the sword off my brow and saying, let's let's get it to, into a man coverage. But I cannot believe Perez. This is the second time that Washington wide open on the sidelines and he completely misses the throw. Third and one. Pressure. Good pickup by... Oh my. It's not going to matter. Richardson picked up a great block. But Perez sacked for the fourth time in the last several offensive plays for Birmingham. I mean, just missed opportunities is what has summed up the game for Birmingham. They have the punt. San Antonio uses a timeout because they're going to have about a minute. This has been just a messy game on both sides. Colton Schmidt punts it away. Greg Ward back to receive. It is a, that is a great punt. San Antonio is going to have to go a lot of yards in just 59 seconds. Ken Farrell, there's his stat line. Ken carries 48 yards, so a really solid first half from him, and he's one of the main reasons why San Antonio has a 3-0 lead. But you got to go back to just the missed opportunities on both sides. This game is only 3-0. One of these teams somewhere along the way has got to find a way to score touchdowns. I mean, there's really no other way around it. And this is definitely the most defensive game that we've seen. But maybe not even defensive, just low scoring because these offenses have just failed to get on the scoreboard. All receivers spread wide for Marquise Williams. Quick pass. It's caught. Rodriguez, but he's going to be taken down right away. Doesn't even get close to getting out of bounds. I really don't see how San Antonio can score here on this drive with only 53 seconds, only one timeout. Just not necessarily a sense of urgency from the commander's offense. At this point, like, one touchdown might just be enough to win it for one of these teams. Back to throw, big blitz from Birmingham, and it's just an inaccurate throw from Williams, who... You know, he's had a decent first half, 8 for 12, 79 yards. We've seen some really nice throws, but we've seen him miss a couple throws. We saw him fumble the football, and it's stuff like that that might just haunt San Antonio at the end of this game. But, again, this is definitely by one of the least amount of offense we've seen. Uh, Orlando against Salt Lake, that game ended 32-8. to last, uh, The last game, Memphis-San Diego, that game ended 37-15. This one... Only 3-0, and Greg Ward is somehow unable to pick up that first down. Another missed opportunity for San Antonio, and they're going to have to punt the ball away. If you told me going into half, or it's not over yet, but going right now, almost into half, that San Antonio would have, I'm going to guess, about 140 offensive yards and only three points to show for it, I'd be a little bit surprised. Yeah, I mean, Marquise Williams strong for 80-something yards. Kenneth Farrow has... And is, is Con Bray trying to break it loose here on this return? And only takes it to the 30. Thought he had a bit of a lane there. 36 seconds, so really not much time for Birmingham to do much of anything. This first half has just been really disappointing. Offensively, defensively. Um, neither team has been able to step up and just make a big play that gets their team some momentum. We've just seen a lot of kind of stalemates on both sides. First and 10 from their own 30. What can Birmingham come up with? 
back to throw is Perez. Quick pass and it's caught by Washington, but he's unable to get out of bounds. Pick up a 15 leaves him with 31 seconds and one timeout. If we look at the, the playoff picture right now, this is such a big game for both of these teams. Again, they're one and two. Birmingham, they're home again to Orlando in week five. That's gonna be a huge game. Orlando's two and two. I mean, if they win this game, they beat Orlando. They're easily in the second spot in that division, in their division. So, a lot of the line for Birmingham. Quick shot, it's caught. And he somehow breaks away from the tackle as West Saxton at the 49, but I don't really think we're gonna see another play. Actually, okay, that's they do have one more timeout. I forgot about that. From the 49, but only 21 seconds left, so really not much time for either team to do much of anything. No timeouts left for the iron. And th the last two minutes of this game is really drawn... It's kind of drawn out here. Second and four. From the 49, can Birmingham come up with something here? You need a pass that just goes out of bounds. It's caught. Quan, actually, Quentin Patton. And I think that's going to take us to the half. Because Madden does not know how to manage time. Regardless of this botched uh, scripting here with the, the time running out, I do not like the lack of urgency that Birmingham has had moving down the field. That will take us to half. And it's been an interesting first half. San Antonio with the 3 0 lead here over the Burning Birmingham Iron. And again, both of these teams in a must win situation, and we haven't seen either offense playing like it at all. 3 0. We'll see what happens here in the second half. Gonna take this half time just to let you all know if you enjoy what we do here at the AF Simulated, and um, we'd love if you financially supported us, whether you wanted to buy some merch, which, yes, we have merchandise. There's a link down in the description to it. Or if you just want to send us a few bucks on PayPal, it would be greatly appreciated. We put a lot of time and effort and work into making this possible, so we appreciate any and all the support. 3 nothing. Second half getting ready to get underway, and Tim Lewis, he's got to find a way to get his iron going. They were shut out in that first half. Luis Perez made some just terrible misses. Meanwhile, on the other side, Marquise Williams in his first start. I know it's been, you know, an interesting game. His first game, his first start. Um... But he's got to do more. And I think Mike Riley has got to start making some play calls to get his San Antonio Commanders in this ballgame. Birmingham will receive Quan Bray. He will take the kick out of the end zone to start the second half. Looking for a lane and takes it up to the 23. Jake, I think you've joined us for one of the most boring games of the season so far. I mean, most of our games have had quite a bit of scoring. This one, 3 nothing. Honestly, I've enjoyed it. It's been interesting to see the new um, Marquise Williams come out versus Luis Perez. And, you know, there have been a lot of exciting plays, and the ones that they've botched up have been also pretty exciting. So, just would like to see some more scoring on the scoreboard. Hey, I mean, we got a whole half to go, so lots of opportunities left for both of these teams. And let's see which one starts. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. San Antonio, 126 total yards. Birmingham, only 47 in that first half. On the ground, they start with Richardson, trying to find a lane. Nice game in the play. But he's only got 19 yards. Look at that stat line. Seven carries for only 19 yards. And Trent Richardson, they've got to find more for him on the ground if they want to be successful in this game. Because the more Trent Richardson does, the easier it is for Luis Perez. Perez is one of those quarterbacks that he thrives when he's got a good running back and when he's got a team that just comes around him and supports him. He can't do it on his own. Second and five now from the 27. It's Richardson again. He, Richardson breaks through. First down up to the 37. And that's exactly what we were talking about. Getting this running game going here. Especially in the second half. It's just so important. Big time first down. Brings up first and 10 now from their own 37. And Birmingham, they've had a couple decent looking marches. They just haven't found a way to score. And... All receivers spread wide right now for Luis Perez. See what the play call is from Tim Lewis. Back to throw. Quick pass. It's caught Jamal Robinson into San Antonio territory all the way to the 46. That was satisfying to see. I, Perez over and over has just kind of, I don't know, he's had a good line, he's had a good running back, and he's just blown it so many times. It was satisfying to see him actually 
make a play when he needed to. Exactly. I mean, that's a perfect throw in stride to Jamal Robinson. Allows him to turn up field, pick up the first down, and get into commander territory. This is the third time that Birmingham has been into commander territory today. Zero points to show for it. Let's see if they can turn that around on this drive. Again, a big opening drive here in the second half. Whoever can just march down and score a touchdown can really get a massive momentum edge in this game. First and 10 from the San Antonio Commanders. 46 back to throw is Perez. With time. Oh no. He's gotta get rid of the football. Just does and is just thrown away. That time he finally was able to get rid of it, but he just hangs on to it way too long. He just sits in the pocket. He's got to do more. Second and 10. From the 46, and Tim Lewis. Look, I know Luis Perez has not played a great game, but Tim Lewis, the head coach of the Birmingham Iron, he's got to continue to call plays that he knows his quarterback is confident in executing. Quick pass. Damien Washington gets nowhere. Blown up. Has a loss of four on the play. Devontae Bosby all over him. I mean, this is just consistently what we've been seeing from both of these teams. They start to put together a drive, and it's just bad play calling and just stupid mistakes that they just continue to shoot themselves in the foot. Third and 14 coming up. Back on their own territory at their own 49, and... Actually, no, they're, they're at, um... We're at San Antonio's 49 still. All receivers for Ryan. What can Perez come up with? Anything but a sack. We'll see. Back to throw. He's got all day. And, well, what do you know? Winston Craig gets to him at the 43. And Perez... Look, I, I know he was kept in. You guys voted for him to stay in, but I don't think that he's the answer for this Birmingham offense. He has shown time and time again that he does not know how to get the th get the job done. And this is just ridiculously stupid. Even for a Madden simulation, he needs to know to get rid of the football. And Perez just not with the IQ to do it. And another good drive that goes into San Antonio territory. No points. Colton Schmidt on to punt it away for the fourth or fifth time today. He'll boot it back to receive his Greg Ward. They'll let it bounce, and do they get a good bounce? This is going to be awfully close, and they won't get it. So, San Antonio to get it as a 20 for their first drive of the second half, and it is still a 3-0 ball game. Kenneth Farrell coming out there. He's had a nice game, 48 yards on the ground on just 10 carries. Hasn't found the end zone yet, but that's because San Antonio has just really botched a lot of their drives. I mean, they were in the red zone twice. You had the fumble from Marquise Williams. You have the uh, just a couple bad plays that pushed him backwards on that second drive. They were held to the field goal. This is where Marquise Williams has a step up, march down the field, put San Antonio in the end zone, take a two-score lead, and start pulling away. I mean, they've let Birmingham hang away, hang around way too long. Back to throw is Williams. Quick pass. It's caught by Farrow, but only gains about two. Again, both these teams playing with a lot on the line, but neither of them are playing with much intensity or, you know, aggression whatsoever. Second and eight now from the 22. They go on the ground as Farrow trying to bounce to the outside, and that was a terrible decision by Farrow. Rare mistake. He, had, he just needed to cut inside there. Jonathan Massacoy was being blocked to the outside, but instead he bounces to the outside and allows... Look at this. He should have just cut underneath there, but instead he let he just runs right into Massacoy. Seems like he almost hesitated at the end there. He could have gone around on the outside too. Yeah, he just kind of didn't really know what to do, and that's a rare error there. Third and 11. Both these offenses, I mean, this is just over and over again the same mistakes. William is back to throw. With time, but he's going to be clobbered by Casey Sales. Huge sack. Someone that we've talked about, he's had a couple sacks this season. I think that's his third of the year. And it comes at a really important time on third and 11. Williams was getting ready to let this thing fly. But Sales just it flies in there. I mean, this, this game 
it opened up looking like we we're going to see a decent amount of scoring. Um, but these defenses have really been stepping things up, and these offenses have shown that they're definitely some of the weakest offenses in the league. I mean, at this point in the game, whichever team ends up winning this, they're still going to drop in the power rankings because they're both just playing very poorly. Joseph Zima now has to punt it from his end zone. He will boot it away. Quan Bray back to receive it. Another good punt. Takes it at the 30, up to the 38. 424 to play in this third quarter, and we only have three points on the board. And you know, we look at, at these off these offenses. San Antonio, they put up 21 points in in week one, but they only had three points going in to quarter number four. Then against Orlando, they put up 22. Last week against San Diego, 23. Birmingham, on the other hand, 26, then 14, then 20. But a lot of these points have been coming towards the end of the game for both these teams, so maybe we'll see a point spree, or maybe it's just these offenses just not gelling. First and 10, off-play action. Interesting looking play. Deep shot down the field, and it is... Incomplete. But Damian Washington cannot hang on with the contact. Second and ten, and I don't know what your thoughts are on these offenses, but it, it can't be all that positive. A little bit disappointed. They go on the draws. Richardson with the big hole, and Richardson cuts up field. And he was one tackle away, I think, from taking it to the house there. Again, a big run that puts him into Birmingham territory. 42 yards on the day for Trent Richardson. Again, this goes to show, I mean, the running backs have been playing pretty well. But, you know, the good running game is not really enough. I mean, it's not a great running game. It's been mediocre slash good for both teams. And the passing games have been so bad that we just haven't really seen much action. One of these teams has just got to step up and have a big play. Trent Richardson, that was a really nice cutback on that on that run. First and ten. Back to throw is Perez. Rifles it across the middle. It's a big completion of Washington inside the 40 to the 37. Despite Perez's poor play today, he has not turned over the football. I mean, hopefully I didn't just jinx him there. I've done that a couple times already this season. To Perez, actually, in fact. Um... But despite that, he's not played a good game. Right now, he's got to prove that he can be this team's leader. March him down, score a touchdown right now. This is the fourth time that they've been in San Antonio territory. Back to throw is Perez. Pressure, and he's going to let it go, and it's incomplete. I don't know how he got that off. Wow. Seems like he had four guys kind of all around the football but didn't hit any of them. Granted, he was getting his feet ch chop-locked, basically, when he was throwing the football. So that one... Not 100% on him. Regardless, second and ten from the 37. They are not in Nick Novak's field goal in field goal range for Nick Novak. So it's gonna be interesting. Second and ten. Back to throw again is Perez. Plenty of time. He's gonna let it fly to the sidelines and just throws it away. San Antonio. I, I I don't know if it's the Commanders' defense just stepping it up in their own territory or what. But third and ten. I mean, Birmingham just cannot find a way to score. Third and ten, huge play. Back to throw is Perez. Blitz from San Antonio. And it's incomplete. Overthrows Trent Richardson on the flat. And that would have been a big completion. Would have put them in range for Nick Novak. And now, do you send out the kicker? I would punt the football. The way these offenses look, I think you can get the ball back in pretty good field position. We'll see what Tim Lewis decided to do, but Nick Novak, again, he's 2 for 5 in the season, the worst kicker in this league, and he's missed two kicks from plus 50, but they're going to try a 54-yard field goal attempt here. I mean, it is perfect weather. This is massive. Nick Novak. It's on its way, and it is short. No good. Novak is 0 for 3 on kicks from 50 yards or more, and he's 2 for 6 now on the season. And that's just disappointing. That was just a yard or two short. It was on the money. I think from 51 or 52, he would have made that. And, and here's the thing. You go back.
to Luis Perez missing that open flat for Trent Richardson on third down. That would have put him to 34-33. Would have made that a, a, a hittable field goal. Just missed opportunities for Birmingham. And now, here is a huge opportunity for San Antonio. Almost midfield already. If you can't find a way to march down and score the, right now, you might as well just, just call it a game. First and 10 from the 44. Back to throw is Marquise Williams. Got a man open. It's caught Greg Ward into Birmingham territory of the 49. Neither of these quarterbacks have passed 100 yards yet on the day. And I think it just kind of goes to show how this game has been. Three nothing still as we near two minutes left in the third quarter. Are we even going to see a touchdown in this game? On the ground, Kenneth Farrow breaks a tackle and breaking through. What a run from Farrow all the way down to the 39. Wow. That's a huge run. That is what you call just breaking tackles. Look at this. I mean, he should have been stuffed behind the line. He breaks the first contact from Joe Powell. Then he basically drags Jack Tocha with him for about five yards. This is hard running from Farrow, who I know he's hungry for it. First and 10 from 39. Now San Antonio in a similar position with um, what Birmingham had on the last drive. Can they continue to push the ball down the field? They pitch it to Farrow to the outside. He's got room. He gets a block. Kenneth Farrow makes a move and still on his feet. Kenneth Farrow all the way down inside the 15 to 13. He has been doing it all today. And that is a massive gain. 26 yards. Look at this. It's beautifully designed. Look at this block upfield. You're not really going to get to see it much. I think that was a tight end, Rodriguez. And you had a host of... <laughs> Iron coming out. Look at this move he puts on Elijah Campbell. San Antonio taking advantage of this opportunity right now. And now, for the third time, they've been in Birmingham's red zone. If you cannot find a way to score a touchdown here, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, this is just prime time. you got momentum. First and 10 from the 13. Williams to throw. Chops it. It's almost picked off. That was dangerous. My goodness. Jack Tocho. If I'm Williams, I would honestly just hand off the football. If Arrow is kind of hot, I, I think that they would have a better chance of picking up the first. The two that was almost Marquise Williams' second turnover in the red zone. Second time of the 13. This kind of looks like it's going to be a run play. We'll see. That was a very, very dangerous throw from Marquise. Off play action. Williams to the end zone. And, whoa, man. That's Mikhail McKay, who he has open, and he throws it behind him. Third and ten now from the 13. This is just an ugly game. Big third and ten. I mean, if they can't score a touchdown, Birmingham can still win this game with a touchdown. Back to throw. Quick shot is underneath. It's Greg Ward, and he stopped short at the seven. And again, Birmingham... Stand strong in the red zone. The amount of missed opportunities between both these teams today is absolutely ridiculous. It's not the worst decision by Williams to get it off underneath, but still, it really is a shame that once again they're held to three points, and I don't know if we're going to see this field goal before the end of the third quarter. We'll see. Nick Rose out there for a 24-yard field goal now. Hit from 23 earlier. And they're just going to run it down to the end of the third. Three down. One more to go in this messy game here in Birmingham. 3-0. San Antonio with the lead. Should extend that to six here with this field goal. But, man, I mean, I think this game for both teams, the title, missed opportunities. Agreed. I don't know about you, but I think it's going to come down to here, like, I think they're both going to get another opportunity or two, and it's going to be which team can seize it, or at least which team can not blow it quite as badly. Yeah, it's a good point. 24-yard field goal attempt from Nick Rose. Hit from 23 earlier. Kick is on its way, and it's right through San Antonio. 6-0 lead here. 
with a full quarter to play. Birmingham with an opportunity here to take the lead with a touchdown. Granted, they're going to have to get the two-point conversion as well to take the lead. But it's possible, very possible. And we'll see what they can do. Mike Riley, I mean, his San Antonio Commanders have not played good. This game has basically been the Kenneth Farrow show. If it wasn't for a couple of those runs from Farrow there on that drive, San Antonio would have punted the football. And Marquise Williams, he, he's made a couple nice throws this game, and I totally understand that in his first start, you can't expect the world out of him. But he has not made the best throws, and not even that, he's been, just made some awful throws. Quan Bray returns it from about the one, makes a move, cuts up field, and taken down to 23. Crazy thing is how, despite what's been going down this game, it's still anyone's game with 9.53 to play. Luis Perez coming back out on the field, and I mean, if he doesn't have a magical fourth quarter, I do not see him starting next week against Atlanta. I mean, ex excuse me, against Orlando. I just don't see how it's possible. We have not had an overtime game yet. Um, but if Birmingham scores a touchdown and nothing else happens and they don't get the two-point conversion, then it would go to overtime. Back to throw is Perez. All day. Checks it out and again. Misses his man. That's an easy throw. 9 for 17 for only 88 yards. I mean, this has just been a very underwhelming performance from Luis Perez. Someone that we had high expectations for coming into the season. And even coming into this game, San Antonio's defense has been one of the worst in the league. And Perez has not been able to find a way to score one point on them. Back to throw. He's going to air it out, and it's just out of bounds. Disastrous performance all around for Perez and the Iron, and they face 3rd and 10 again. A, a spot that they have been horrendous at today. I don't even think that they've gotten a 3rd down conversion yet throughout this entire ballgame. Back to throw. Perez, once again with all day, and he's taken down again. Arthur Miley gets in there. Sixth sack of the day for the Commanders. Absolutely ridiculous stuff. And again, Perez getting ready to throw it, and in that position, I know you're going to take a hit. Throw the football. Even if you're picked off, I just get rid of it. I, I don't understand... What is going through the mind of Luis Perez? And I really think that next week they need to start Keith Price, someone. You know, we know that he's got athleticism. We know that he can scramble. And I think it's going to be the boost that Birmingham needs to try to make a playoff push. I agree. Going back to what you said, Perez doesn't seem to have the IQ right now. Uh, I don't know if it's having the seven interceptions this season more than any of the other quarterbacks, but he seems like he's just super apprehensive and indecisive. And he just paralyzes himself back there. And I know you can give credit to the secondary, too, but he just can't seem to make up his mind. He does have some openings, and he just misses easy throws. Good field position for the Commanders again. Let's see if they can start closing out this ball game. I and mean, we've got under a little under nine minutes to play. They're up 6 nothing, and this would be a big road win, and despite how ugly it is, if San Antonio comes up with this win, they improve the 2-2 two and two in this season, and then they're playing in Arizona the week after that, and the Arizona Hotshots have not been a good team at all, this season, so a big opportunity for them to go 3-2 and two if they can win this game. Back to throw is Marquise Williams. Got his minutes picked off! Intercepted! That's Ryan White! At the 46, and that might just be the play that Birmingham needs to get themselves in this ball game. Wow, second turnover of the day for Marquise Williams. And it's just... What a play by Ryan White. He basically jumps over. I think it's DeMarcus Ayers. It is not the best pass from Marquise Williams, but just an insane play. And Birmingham now, once again, they are literally being handed the ball in San Antonio territory. If they cannot find a way to score, I don't know what I'm going to say. I mean, it really, this has been one of the most pathetic games of football offensively for both of these teams. 
two turnovers for San Antonio. And again, this is what we've been talking about. Turnovers is what killed this team. And might just do it here. Perez back to throw. Gonna go deep down the field and he misses him. Wes Saxon was wide open. That is the third time today that Luis Perez has had a man wide open down the field. And he's done nothing. Unbelievable. Second and 10 now from the 46, and I can only imagine what Tim Lewis is saying right now to himself after that missed throw. Back to throw again. Let's it go. It tipped up. That was very dangerous. Look in the direction of Saxon is blown up. Deron Smith. Actually, excuse me. Um, that was uh Jordan Thomas. Third and ten. Again, look at this. This is ridiculous. Birmingham was just given the football at the 46. And they can't do squat. Third and ten. Back to throw again is Perez. He's just gonna air it out deep. He's got a man and it is hauled. It is dropped! Washington can't hang on. That time Perez actually dropped it in the bucket. And, and it gets knocked away. Look at this. It's a perfect throw. He drops it right in there. And that's Deron Smith who comes in from behind with Curtis Drummond. 4th and 10 from the 46, and I think Birmingham's going to have to punt. Well, it seems like a team that wants to lose. Yeah, you're not kidding. I mean, that is just... That one, for once, is not... That's not on Luis Perez. High punt. Can they get a good bounce? No. San Antonio is set up top of the 20. Here, out comes Marquise Williams, 12 for 19, 99 yards and a pick. I mean, this has not been a very good day for him. Remember, he also had the fumble there in the red zone. I mean, San Antonio could easily have about 20 points right now, and they have six. Somehow, is enough to have a 6 nothing lead. First and 10 coming up from 20. See what Marquise Williams can do on the ground. It's Farrow trying to find a lane, and he lost the football. And it's picked up, and it's going to go to the end zone. Elijah Campbell, and it's a tie ball game. The third turnover of the day for San Antonio. It's almost like San Antonio was trying to hand the ball game to Birmingham. Ridiculous. Farrow trying to fight for extra yardage. He loses it. He gets stripped, and Campbell is right there to take it into the end zone. Look at this effort. That's Ryan White, who had the interception on the last drive, forces the fumble on Farrow. And Kenneth Farrow, that's his first fumble of the season. And I know if San Antonio loses this game, you know, we, it's easy to blame it on Kenneth Farrow for that fumble. But he he's the sole reason that San Antonio has six points on the board. So you can't necessarily 100% blame him for that. That's just a tough break. And it's an excellent play by Birmingham's defense, who I'm sure has just been really pissed off. That they have been unable to score points. Two point conversion to give them the lead. This is huge. Back to throw is Perez. Backing away. And <laughs> he's going to go down. <laughs> My bets right now on going to overtime simply because these teams can't seem to score. I mean, going into this game, I was talking with you about paths for both these teams to make the playoffs and and how they've got a shot at taking the second seed or even the first for some of them in the division. Now, I don't even know how they each have a win. Hey, this has been disgusting. That's sack number seven or eight for the, the commanders? Yeah, I don't think it's officially going to count because of two-point conversion, but yeah, it's it's a big one. And six to six? Which team is going to step up and make something happen? I mean, granted, Birmingham's defense just did, but... What I'm saying more more so is which team offensively is going to step up and make a play, and I really don't know. San Antonio, I mean, there's still eight and a half minutes to play in this ball game. Plenty of time for one of these teams to make something happen, but that's a huge missed opportunity on, the, on that two-point conversion. If you're Birmingham... You're taking an 8-6 lead there. And it's sad that the offense can't even get a two-point conversion. 
Kenneth Farrow, look, he's had a great day. 14 carries, 81 yards, averaging almost 6 yards a carry. I know that that fumble might come back to haunt them and might lose in this game. And again, I know we talked about turnovers. 3 on the day for San Antonio. I mean, it's just like they just can't stop turning over the football. I don't know what it is. Um, we go to week 1. Uh, Logan Woodside had an interception. Week 2... They actually did not turn over the football. But then in week three, they turned it over six times, and here they turned it over three. First and ten, Marquise Williams to throw. He's going to take off with it, and he's got some room to run. Down the sidelines, and two to 38, so his first run of the day goes for 13 yards. It's a nice play, and it's a good job by Marquise Williams recognizing that he's not going to get a good pass, and he's just going to take off with it. A lot of open field. Good decision by the young play caller. If there's one bright spot for San Antonio today, it's that Marquise Williams is, I know he's made some mistakes, but he does show a lot of potential. I know it's his first game. Um, I do like the way he keeps poised back there even after making mistakes. Oh, absolutely. I think he definitely has a, a, has a big chance to do some big things in this league as long as he holds his starting position. On the ground, it's Farrow. Barreling up to the 44. I know he's definitely going to want to make up for that fumble, and I think this game will kind of have a fitting end if Ken Farrell scored a go-ahead touchdown here. You know, redemption after the fumble. He's played a great game. He's closing in on 100 yards. He's got 87 right now. Second and four. Let's get the play call this from Mike Riley. Six to six. Williams to throw. Chucking it deep, and it's just an incomplete pass. Still not able to get to 100 yards. Big. This is a huge third and four right now. It does not get much bigger than this. Seven minutes to play. You got a chance to really take hold of momentum right now. See what they can do here on third and four. Back to throw. Checks it out. It's caught, but it's going to be short. Why would you pass it? Why would you hit Farrow on that play? That's just another poor decision by Marquise Williams to sense the pressure and try to get rid of it quick. But throw to someone that's past the sticks. That's Ryan White in there. Again, who's made some phenomenal plays today. And Birmingham's going to get the ball back. And you called it. I think this game might just go to overtime. They're going to go for it. Wow, so Mike Riley keeping the offense out on the field. They go on the ground as Kenneth Farrell gets the first down. Unbelievable. I thought for sure they were going to put the football away. Mike Riley decides to keep the offense out there, and I think that is a phenomenal play call. Can't dial it up much better than that, and, you know, we're closing in on six minutes to play. Now under six minutes to play with the time runoff, and... Midfield for San Antonio. Off play action. Marquise Williams cuts it up field. He fumbles it again! Ryan White recovered it! Ryan White has really had a phenomenal second half. I know he had the interception, and now two fumble recover. Or, uh, I know he forced the one against um, Farrow. Farrow, and now he recovers this one. You gotta be kidding me! That's the fourth turnover of the day for San Antonio! Third this half. Third this quarter. Marquise Williams coughs it up for the second time. And I was just thinking on that run. He's got to hold on to the football. I don't know what it is with this, the ball security today. And now, Birmingham once again handed the football in phenomenal field position. And it is wild that it is a 6-6 ball game considering the fact that San Antonio has turned the ball over four times. Can Luis Perez have a drive to remember here? I can't believe that. After the four down conversion, Williams coughs it up again. First and ten. Back to throw is Perez. Heavy blitz from San Antonio. Gonna let it go deep. And he's got it. Washington at the 34. I'm actually surprised to see a completion. Right? That's a great throw there from Perez. I mean, where has that been all game long? And a nice grab from Washington, who's had a couple drops today. At the 34, and now you're knocking on the field, uh, on on the door, a field goal range. And again, 
Nick Novak missed that 54 yarder. They're gonna have to get a little bit closer here if they wanna at least have a chance of taking the lead. First and 10 now from the 34. Back to throw is Perez. Rifles it across the middle. Man wide open, it's complete. Jamal Robinson to the 14, and this is by far the best drive Birmingham has had. What a turn of events. It's a bullet from Perez across the middle. It's an excellent play. Robinson with a nice grab, and who would have thought that after all this, despite and San Antonio, with all the turnovers that they've had, I still have kind of they've dominated this game. They have dominated this game, and it's those four, four turnovers that are really going to cost them here if Birmingham ends up winning this game. Perez back to throw again. With time, just checks it out. It's caught. Blown up. But West Saxon takes it to the 10. Zach Sanchez on the tackle. Time continuing to run, and Birmingham in a pretty comfortable position as long as they don't turn over the football. That's a really big if right now, given how both teams offensively have been playing. <laughs> right. And after all this, is going to be really disappointing for San Antonio to come up short you know this is a big game on the road could have gotten back to 500 and if they lose this game again because of the turnovers you know there's gonna be a lot of things that have to change there offensively Perez rifles it is caught Quentin Patton he is into the end zone what a fight by Patton touchdown Birmingham and they take a 12-6 lead unreal stuff Quentin Patton He's a really underrated receiver. Look at this fight. Four San Antonio Commanders could not take him down. Look at that. That is what you call a fighter. I love the effort. 12-6 and now a two-point conversion to make it an eight-point game if Luis Perez actually throws it. Hey, Perez actually did a good job getting the ball out of his hands on that drive. It's a miracle. This almost makes things more painful for the coach. I mean, now he has Oh my! Drive. That looks more like first half and third quarter. Nick and Temple gets in there. So it is 12 6. San Antonio with plenty of time to march down. And the funny thing is that after all this, and despite Birmingham taking the lead, Commanders can easily win this game with a touchdown and two point conversion. If, if they can find a way to close it or drive it. Another thing, not only are the turnovers disappointing, but when you consider the fact that San Antonio got into the red zone three times and came away with only six points. Even with a couple of those turnovers, if they would have scored touchdowns, it'd be a much different ball game right now. And again, missed opportunities for the commanders. It's really just killing them today. And their defense, which has not been pl playing good at all, this loss is not on their defense if they lose this game. Oh, not at all. The defense has only given up one score. And that was, and that was after a turnover that. again. Novak sends it away. Back to receive. His Ayers will take a knee in the end zone. So now, 3.52 to play. A chance for Marquise Williams to redeem himself despite turning over the football three times today. And it's kind of funny. I mean, Logan Woodside turned over the football six times last week and we're like... Well, Marquise Williams probably can't do as bad as that, but it's been, honestly, almost as bad. I mean, those three turnovers have really crushed him here in this fourth quarter. From their own 25, they got to go 75 yards in just under four minutes. We'll see if they can make it happen. On first down, Williams to throw. Quick pass, it's caught. Up to the 33. That's a reception. Um, I think that was a tight end, Rodriguez. Second and two now from the 33. Plenty of time. I mean, you definitely want to try to, you know, control the time. 316 to play. They got to be a little bit more urgent with football. Big blitz from Birmingham. Williams, why? What is he doing? He's going to be sacked by Jamar Summers. It's a loss of two on the play as they bring up third and four. With a huge blitz 
find your open receiver. I don't know why Marquise Williams decided to just try to tuck it and run. Up the middle, no less. Where all the pressure was coming from. Look, he's got 88 Rodriguez wide open there in that flat. And I think Marquise Williams, you know, just lack of game experience, especially in this league. Kind of showing right now, and again, you know, it's tough to get your first start in a position like this. But we'll see. It's third and four. Big third down right now for the Commanders. Back to throw is Williams. That is dropped. Incomplete. Greg Ward can't hang on. This is just such a messy game. Just hits right off his hands. That was actually Evan Rodriguez, the tight end. Fourth and four, the game basically rides on this for San Antonio. Trips there. Down at the bottom. Let's see what they decide to do here. Fourth and four. Blitz from Birmingham. He's going to go deep. He's got a man. It's caught. And it's Kenneth Farrow to the 45. And they keep their hopes alive. Set them up first and 10 at the 45. And I think they're going to hit the two minute warning. Wow. So they find a way to convert. Kenneth Farrow just wide open. We have hit the two minute warning. 12 to 6, the Birmingham Iron somehow have the lead. I mean, this has just been a really crazy game of missed opportunities and turnovers. Poor offensive play. Two minutes for San Antonio to try to march 55 yards. Huge fourth down conversion, and can they use that to build some momentum? Back to throw is Williams. What is he doing? He's going to take off with it and smother it at the 46. They're going to have to get back at the line quickly. Second and nine as time continues to run. And it, it, I don't know why Williams just runs with the football so quick. Kind of funny to watch on one side. Perez will wait like a minute and a half to throw the football. And then Williams will take off after fumbling twice. They'll just go all the time. It's kind of weird. Darcy across the middle. It's a man wide open. Evan Rodriguez down to the 30. Wow. The tight end had the drop on third down, but redeems himself with a huge reception across the middle. And that sets him up really nicely. At the 30, I mean, this game is far from over. A couple completions here in San Antonio. They still have three timeouts. Back to throw, Williams. Taking off again. And he gets out of bounds at the 24. This game has been really... This has been a very wild fourth quarter, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Second and three now from the 24. San Antonio... <laughs> I feel like it's just going to be their fifth turnover. But who knows? They've turned it over four times. Can they avoid a fifth here? And somehow tie this game up or even take the lead? Second and three. Williams back to throw. He's got a man, and it's caught by Farrow, but he's going to be short of the first down. Brings up third and one from the 22. They're going to elect to just let the time keep running right now. Third and one. From the 22. I, I'm surprised they didn't just use a timeout. Under 40 seconds. Third and one. Back to throw is Williams. With time, guns it. And it's incomplete. He missed his man. He had him across the middle. I think that was Demarcus Ayers. And another massive fourth down coming up. Can Birmingham's defense win it? Or can Williams step up and look at this? He's got, I think it's Mikel McKay or Ayers just streaking across the middle. We're to set him up in the red zone. Everything rides on this. Fourth and one. Back to throw is Williams. Let's it go. And it is knocked away. Incomplete. Jonathan Massacoy, the linebacker, reads it like the back of his hand. And that should do it. Look at that. Looking for Mikhail McKay. The linebacker just flies in there to knock that ball away. Unbelievable. And I love how Perez, 13-25, 145 yards and a touchdown. I mean, those don't look like the... Like, they don't, 
they don't look like the worst stats, but <laughs> they don't really rep represent how he's played today. No, Regardless, no. Birmingham is going to come away with a huge win here. That is so disappointing for William. The chance to redeem himself. And it looks like the commander is going to fall to 1-3. and three. On the ground, Richardson barreling forward. Still not down, and finally down to 31 in San Antonio. They do have three timeouts, but I don't think it's really going to matter. Well, now what they need is holding them to no yards in the next three plays. And then they still need a Hail Mary after all of that. They might not even get it because they're going to have to punt, which takes up a decent amount of time. What a disappointing drive, though. A couple of big plays and just missed opportunities. Richardson got the first down. That'll do it officially. San Antonio blows another timeout. What a... I guess you would call it a comeback win for Birmingham? I don't know if 6 nothing is that much of a deficit, but for this offense it was. And really everything turned around with Elijah Campbell. That fumble 6. Ryan White with the interception, the fumble force, the fumble recovery. I mean, this defense really, really stepped it up today. And Jonathan Massacoy not going to weigh that final chance for San Antonio. And the Iron are going to come away with a huge win and go improve a 2-2, two two, despite, you know, a really poor performance offensively up until that fourth quarter. You're San Antonio right now. I don't know how you even get out of this. I mean, you have two games remaining against Salt Lake. One and three right now. They're way behind the fleet and the stallions. Yeah, I mean this this was game was a must win, and they're not going to make it happen. And time continuing to run here, and that should pretty much do it here in this game. And down three seconds. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, San Antonio needed to win this game, and they're not. What a win for Birmingham at home to improve the two and two in the season. Big game for them. They improved the two and two. Meanwhile, San Antonio drops to 1-3, 12-6 loss, 4 turnovers. The story of the season and the story of this game for San Antonio. They drop to 1-3, really tough loss, and next week they'll be at the Arizona Hotshots, who are 1-2. They'll be playing the Atlanta Legends later on. Last game of the week, but what 12 points there were enough to do it for the Iron in that fourth quarter. Fumble 6, nice touchdown pass to Quentin Patton, and that... We'll do it for us here at Birmingham. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this game. And if you're a San Antonio fan, I am sorry for the way that your team lost today. Um, make sure to go follow us on Twitter to get all the info, updates, news, important stuff like that. Thank you, Jake, for joining us on this one. Really had a fun time having you here. My pleasure. Exciting game. Maybe we'll have him on again sometime soon. But yeah, go follow us on Twitter. Check out the AFG sound in the description below. And also, again, if you feel like supporting us financially, it would be greatly appreciated. If not, that's fine. Just keep supporting us by watching our channel, sharing our stuff. Really appreciate it. Well, that'll do it for us. 12-6 win for Birmingham. And week four ends with the 1-2 Arizona Hotshots playing the 2-1 Atlanta Legends. Should be a good one.